Hi everybody, this is Ramina Zarm, owner and operator of Flex to Success Clinical Rehabilitation Services. I just want to do a follow-up video on Bipolar 2 Disorder. A couple weeks ago I did a video on Bipolar 1 Disorder where we talked about the differing characteristics between Bipolar 1 and Bipolar 2. So just to recap, because we're going to be doing Bipolar 2 today, for Bipolar 1 diagnosis you have to have a full-blown manic episode in order to be diagnosed with bipolar 1. For bipolar 2, you have to have a hypomanic episode and a major depressive episode. Hypomania is a watered down version of a full blown manic episode. What it means is it's less severe. So basically hypomania mirrors all the symptoms and characteristics of a full blown manic episode, but they aren't as intense to require hospitalization. So just wanted to clarify that before I jump right into it. Um, and without further ado, here goes. So bipolar 2 disorder is characterized by a clinical course of reoccurring mood dis episodes consisting of one or more major depressive episodes and at least one hypomanic episode. The major depressive episode must last at least two weeks and the hypomanic episode must last at least four days. Could last longer, but has to at least last four days, and the major depressive episode has to last at least two weeks. So, what is a hypomanic episode? Well, we were just talking about how a hypomanic episode is a less intense, less severe version of a manic episode. So what you'll realize when I go through the criteria is that most of the characteristics are exactly the same as a manic episode but they aren't as intense to require hospitalization. So I'm just going to recap, um, you know, mania slash hypomania criteria, and um, then we'll jump right into the major depressive episode criteria. So you have a good understanding of both. And for bipolar 2, which is also known as bipolar depression, again, you have to have a hypomanic episode and you have to have a major depressive episode in order to have the diagnosis. So... Hypomanic episode is described as a distinct period of abnormally and persistently elevated, expansive, or irritable mood, and abnormally and persistently increased activity or energy, lasting at least four consecutive days, and present most of the day, nearly every day. During the period of mood disturbance and increased energy and activity, three or more of the following symptoms have persisted. Four, if the mood is only irritable, which represents a noticeable change from usual behavior and have been present to a significant degree. So let's segue into the criteria. The first criteria is inflated self-esteem or grandiosity. What is grandiosity? Well, I've reviewed grandiosity before. Being grandiose is basically having false beliefs about what your ability is thinking that you can fly, thinking that you have superpowers, thinking that you can do impossible feats that you've never done before, thinking that you're a genius when your IQ is 100. Um, just a couple little examples of what it means to be grandiose. And inflated self-esteem is very similar along those lines. The second criteria is a decreased need for sleep. Feeling rested after only three hours of sleep would be you know, that would be considered a decreased need for sleep. So it's very common for people with bipolar 2 disorder to sleep like a couple hours a day when they're having a, a hypomanic episode and think that they're fully rested and that there's no issue with that. Criteria number three would be that they're more talkative than usual. And they feel, not only are they more talkative, but they feel this pressure to like keep talking and to not have any pauses or any moments of silence. It actually causes them anxiety. Criteria number four is a flight of ideas or a subjective experience that thoughts are racing. So the subjective experience would be you thinking that your thoughts are racing. So if you feel like your thoughts are racing and in your mind you're jumping from topic to topic and thought to thought, that would be like an example of racing thoughts. And then a flight of ideas would be like you're constantly getting like different, you're constantly getting different ideas of things to talk about that are very loosely associated with one another. So you might think about buying a car, then you might think about being a, a, a race car driver. You might think about 
going to play basketball, and then you might think about going to another state to watch a basketball game, like spur of the moment. Um, so these are examples of things that are kind of along the same lines, but really loosely associated in how they relate to one another. Criteria number five is distractibility. When your attention is drawn too easily to other things instead of what you're supposed to be focusing on, which is the task at hand. Um, criteria number six is an increase in goal-directed behavior. Um, this could be socially, at work, or school, or sexually. And psychomotor agitation is usually a component of that, which means facial twitches, you know, these repetitive physical behaviors that you might engage in, clenching of fists, pacing, grunting to yourself, um, you know, any type of muscle twitches, anything like that can be considered psychomotor agitation. Criteria number seven is excessive involvement in activities that have a high potential for painful consequences. So any type of high-risk behaviors that could lead to physical injury, um, those would be considered to meet this seventh criteria. And that is actually the last criteria. Um, there's only seven criteria total in the hypomania criteria paradigm in the DSM-5. C, D, E, and F are notations that are made to take into consideration before you actually diagnose somebody with a bipolar two disorder. Section C says the episode is associated with an unequivocal change in functioning that is uncharacteristic of the individual when not symptomatic. So if you're not going through a hypomanic episode and you're not going through a major depressive episode and you exhibit a bizarre behavior like, like skipping a loved one's funeral or another example would be like you know, stealing a car when, like, you don't have a record, a criminal record of any kind, just an impulsive thing to do. Stealing something, shoplifting, when you've never done anything like that before. Any of those things could be considered, like, unequivocal changes in normative behaviors, which would cause someone to raise an eyebrow and say, hey, maybe this person needs some help. Maybe they're going through something. Maybe they need to be evaluated. Section D talks about a disturbance in mood and a change in functioning that's observable by others. This could be anything from, you know, avoiding your family when you're normally like the family man, so to speak, or going out to play golf when you have always said that you hated golf. Uh, anything like that where it's just outside of the norm and noticeable to others. Uh, section E talks about the episode is not severe enough to cause marked impairment in social or occupational functioning or to necessitate hospitalization. So all they're basically saying is you can have changes in, in your functioning that are noticeable by people you work with or people that you socially engage with, but they're not so severe that they would require you to be hospitalized, which would be something that would happen with if you were having a full-blown manic episode. So in a hypomanic episode, it's just... Again, the, the, the focus is on intensity. It's not as intense. The characteristics are not as intense in hypomania as they are in full-blown manic episode. Section F talks about the ruling out medical. So as therapists, we always want to rule out medical issues. We don't want to diagnose somebody with a mental illness if they're having a medical issue that's causing the symptoms. You want to first rule out that medical issue because once that medical issue is taken care of, you might notice that the symptoms are no longer there and now you just diagnose this person with bipolar 2 disorder that could stick with them for a really long time. So you always want to be careful to review medical issues with a patient and to rule out medical issues if you suspect that they could be experiencing something that could be caused by a medical issue instead of a mental health issue. All right. Now, that, now that's the full criteria and sections in hypomania for bipolar 2, also known as bipolar depression. Now I'm going to jump into the major depressive uh, criteria for a major depressive episode. So in a major depressive episode, five or more of the following symptoms have been present during the same two-week period and represent a change from previous functioning. 
at least one of the symptoms is either depressed mood or a loss of interest or pleasure in doing things that were normally pleasurable, also known as anhedonia. The criteria number one for a major depressive episode is depressed mood for most of the day, nearly every day, as indicated by either subjective report, which means you telling someone that you're feeling like empty or hopeless or sad, or an observation made by others that you're feeling this way, which means you're self-isolative, you're not very talkative, you're kind of withdrawn and in your own world. If somebody else notices these things and reports it, that could satisfy criteria one for an, uh, an MDE, which is a major depressive episode. Criteria two is markedly diminished interest or pleasure in all or almost all activities. Most of the day, nearly every day, as indicated by either subjective account or observation. So subjective account in this sense would mean that other people are noticing these behaviors in you. Observation, uh, sorry, I had that backwards. Subjective account would be you noticing the behaviors in yourself. Observation would be somebody else noticing those behaviors in you. Criteria number three is significant weight loss. I've reviewed this before in other videos. Basically, if you're either gaining 5% of your body weight in one month or losing 5% of your body weight in one month, that is considered a red flag and you might want to rule out depression if you're noticing that you're either losing or gaining weight to that capacity. Criteria number four is insomnia or hypersomnia nearly every day. So what does that mean? That means you're either sleeping most of the day, all the time, or you're not sleeping enough. So you can experience either one with a major depressive episode, and that's because mood irritability is a part of major depressive disorder or a major depressive episode. Mood irritability is a component of it in many people. So if you're experiencing mood irritability, you might be having difficulty sleeping because you're so amped up and upset. So that could cause you to have insomnia, not sleep as much, which would still be a red flag for depression. And it kind of overlaps hypomania because in hypomania, if you remember, the second criteria for hypomania was a decreased need for sleep. So yeah, insomnia could be seen in both a hypomanic episode and a major depressive episode. There is some overlap there. Criteria number five is psychomotor agitation or retardation nearly every day, observable by others, not merely subjective feelings of restlessness or being slowed down. So in this one, you would have to be experiencing psychomotor agitation to the extent where other people are noticing it. So if I see you pacing for like long amounts of time, or if I see you clenching your fists or tightening up or, you know, moving around a lot, like uh, you're restless and you're having a hard time sitting down for an excessive amount of time, you know, that might be, that, that would satisfy that criteria. Criteria seven is feelings of worthlessness or excessive and appropriate guilt. So constantly feeling like things are your fault, constantly being upset that you did something wrong, constantly feeling like you're responsible for bad things happening to other people or yourself. That's what they mean by that. It's, it's pretty intense in a major depressive episode. That level of guilt is not like, you know, oh, I feel bad. I didn't save you a piece of candy. That level of guilt is I'm isolating in my room and crying because I feel like I did something horrible to someone that I didn't even do. So it's almost like a delusional form of guilt, but it could be something that realistically happened, but you're just overreacting to it. So it could be both. The eighth criteria is diminished ability to think or concentrate, so distractibility. Criteria nine is recurrent thoughts of death, suicide attempts, suicide attempts with a plan, suicidal ideation, any type of suicidal behaviors or self-harm behaviors or thoughts of harming yourself would be grounds to get evaluated for a major depressive episode. Okay? So that concludes major depression and hypomania. 
you have to have both of those in order to be diagnosed with bipolar 2. Bipolar 2 is also known as bipolar depression because you have to have that major depressive episode, whereas in bipolar 1, you don't have to have a major depressive episode. You just have to have a full-blown manic episode. So I hope this kind of clarifies the difference between bipolar 1 and bipolar 2. I plan on doing another video within the next couple of weeks or so on cyclothymic disorder, which would conclude the bipolar series. If you guys have any suggestions on videos that you want me to do or topics that you'd like me to discuss, please feel free to leave it in the comment section. If there's a specific mental illness that you'd like to learn more about, I'd be more than happy to do a presentation on it. Okay, guys, enjoy the day today. Ladies, have a great day. It's a nice day out. Try to get to the park. Try to get to the beach. Enjoy yourselves today. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.